Hallelujah. Brethren, we are welcome again to service today. And I thank God for this great opportunity that we have, that we are meeting in different locations, yet the same service. We give God thanks for this great opportunity. Today, I'm continuing where I stopped last week on the fact that we need to speak responsibly, that our words matter. Now, I want us to take the Bible affirmation together before we get into the world. Lift up your Bible and declare, this is my Bible. It is God's inner and unchanging word. It is my most valuable earthly possession. A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. The Bible is God talking to me personally. I therefore listen to it carefully and obey it fully. And I internalize it in my life by doing these four things. Know it in my head by diligent study. Store it in my heart by memorization and meditation. Show it in my life by obeying his teachings and sow it in my world by being a witness. Hereafter, I will never be the same. Never, never, never in the name of Jesus for his honor and glory, both now and forevermore. Amen. Father, we give you thanks for this great opportunity for us to meet together in fellowship. And we thank you because by the blood of the Lamb, our fellowship is acceptable before you. Lord, breathe upon your word today. Let this word mix with faith in our hearts. Let this word produce understanding in our hearts, O God, and cause it all to bring healing to us, O Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please open with me your Bibles to three passages of Scripture. The first I'll read from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, chapter 8, from verse 9, 18 to verse 21. Genesis, chapter 8, from verse 18 to 21. The Bible says, And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. And every beast, every creeping thing, every fowl, whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cause the ground any more for man's sake, for the imaginations of man's heart is wicked from his youth. Neither again will I smite any more every living thing as I have done. He said, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruits. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 we are told, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Praise the Lord. Beloved of God, our words matter. And so it's important that we speak responsibly. We speak to bring creation into pass. We speak to bring the purposes of God into pass in our lives. We speak to create the kind of life we want to see. Our words are like seeds. And it's therefore extremely important that we guard the seeds of life that we have. In everything that we do, words determine what the outcome will be. Let me repeat that again. In everything we do, words determine what the outcome will be. When Noah did what he did, God spoke to himself and it became a seed sown in time. Today, no matter how much it rains and floods, when we see the rainbow, we know that there is no destruction inside. Beloved of God, in everything that occurs in the natural of the supernatural realm, there is always something that initiates it. 
and the seed is the initiator. And our words as seeds can initiate any manifestation of miracles that we see. Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, he says, For assuredly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be moved and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says will be, he will have whatever he says. A seed holds the paramount power that can birth any miracle that we, want, that we need. And I want you to know that the greatest seed in your hands is the words that you speak from your mouth. The Bible explicitly expounds what's the intensity of this power. So that in Genesis, before the world began, God spoke into the chaotic situation of the cosmos. And we began to see the beauty of the atmosphere, the beauty of vegetation, the beauty of plant life being made manifest simply because of the seed that God sowed, the seed of the word. Beloved of God, seeds spoken in faith are extremely important. And it is important, therefore, that we begin to plant these seeds deliberately in our lives, in the lives of our children, in our business premises, in our places, wherever you are, begin to declare the word. You enter into a new place, speak the word. You enter into a place of competition, speak the word. Never keep quiet. Acts 19.20 tells us that, in the, that so mightily grew the word of God and it prevailed. Why? Because for 27 months, uh, the Bible says that Apostle Paul kept saying the same thing. He kept speaking the word. And the world grew and had became the influential voice or the influential entity in that particular place. In Genesis chapter, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, David kept saying the same thing. He kept saying the same thing. And it got to the mouth, to the ears of Saul the king. And of course, the rest is now history. Beloved of God, it's extremely important that we give something God to work with. It was the words of David that God worked with and channeled him to meet uh, the king Saul. It's extremely important that we begin to speak words of power, words that will produce in our lives. And the best words to speak is not positive confession. I'm not speaking of positive confession. I'm speaking of you speaking the word that God has spoken. Take time, meditate on the word of God, and begin to make a declaration of this word in your life. No matter how little you know, and I want you to know that from where you are, you can become great. Begin to declare in faith. Begin to declare in joy. Knowing in your heart that these seeds that you are sowing, the seeds of the word of God, will produce a very bountiful harvest of miracles to you. Begin to speak now. I am a child of God. I am born of God. For the greater one indwells in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He says, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Beloved of God, you have the victory you. Don't keep quiet. Keep declaring it. Beloved, even when we know the truth at times, Choosing the right words in the midst of challenging circumstances can be an issue. That is why you need to be convinced today about the power of the words you speak. Whether that people around you understand or not. And often we are faced with such challenges. It could be a challenge of our upbringing. When you are growing up, maybe your parents were disadvantaged or poor in life. They tell you, remember the house you come from. In this house, we are poor. We are this, we are that. They are sowing into you the seeds of poverty. And you have learned to accept it. And it is conditioning your thoughts. It's conditioning everything you do. You want to attempt something great. You say, ah, in my house, we don't do it all simply because of this or that. The seeds that your parents sowed into you. But beloved of God, I have come to tell you today that your heavenly father has sowed a bigger seed in you. Your heavenly father has sowed a better seed in you. A seed that can overcome every adversity. You get into the words of your heavenly father. Begin to study the word from Genesis to Revelation. Particularly in the New Testament. And begin to declare. I remember reading Genesis from the book of Psalm. I mean the book of Psalm. Psalm 27. David said something. Clearly I'm sure he must have said it in the midst of a challenge. In Psalm 27 he said. He said the Lord is my light and my salvation. Salvation. Of whom, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He said, when the wicked, even my enemy, come to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. And he said something very interesting in verse 3. 
which I find very, very challenging. In fact, if you read from verse 3 to verse 5, you will see, he said, Though an army encamp against me, beloved of God, the world is besieged by an army today. He says, My heart shall not fear. He says, Though war rise against me, in this will I be confident. And he went on to say in verse 4, He says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Dwelling in the house of the Lord speaks of the presence of the Lord. He says, All the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. In verse 5, he says something. In the midst of the war, in the midst of the trouble, he said, For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Beloved of God, when you begin to declare these things, there's faith that rises in you. There's an excitement that rises in you. There's a confidence that rises in you. If you go to uh, Psalm 34, he also says something else there. If we begin to read from verse 1, and we'll begin to see things happen. You see, when you begin to say all these things in your heart, and say to yourself, and say to the negative circumstances around you, when the Lord God Almighty hides you, who will find you? Who? No man. No, let anybody begin to search for you, he won't find you. If you go to Psalm 34, quickly with me, from verse 1, Psalm 34, from verse 1 with me. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. This is a summary of what David had experienced. He's summarizing. He's telling us. He says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth because the Lord shall, has done something. He says, my soul shall make a bow. Still speaking. Still speaking. In the Lord. He says, the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Why? Those that are going through what he's going through. What he had been through. Those that are experiencing the challenges. Those that are seeing this, seeing that. See all kinds of things happening around them. And they are hearts are fainting. He will come and say, brother, take it easy. I have been there. I have passed the night there. This happened, that happened, that happened to me. You have not even experienced half of what has happened. And the Lord delivered me. Hear what he said. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. That is, praise the Lord with me. In the midst of his testimony, let us exalt his name together. Why? In verse 5 and 4. He said, I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Now listen to verse 5. He says, they looked to him and were radiant. Why? Their faces were not ashamed. Why? Because said, this poor man cried unto the Lord. The Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. Verse 7. He says, the angels of the Lord encamp around those that fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who puts his trust in the Lord. Ah, beloved of God, I want you to know this. I'm excited in my spirit sharing this with you. Because I know you can program your life with your word. You can program your life with your word based on what God has said. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he came to Joshua and he said, Joshua, listen, it doesn't matter. You may think you are not as great as Moses. You are not as anointed as Moses has been. But I want you to, I want you to know that you can be great too. He said, listen to me. This book of the law shall not depart from where? From your mouth. Begin to say what God has said. The Lord is my light my salvation. Begin to say it. He says, rejoice not over me, my enemy, for when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be my light. Say what God has said. Don't limit yourself to the circumstance. Don't limit yourself to the situation. He said, the angels of the Lord are encamping around them that fear him. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God delivered him from them all. Beloved of God, sow the seed for your miracle. Sow the seed for your deliverance at this time. Sow the seed for you to have the things that you are expecting in your life. He said to Joshua, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. Mouth, but thou shalt meditate. What does it mean to meditate? Begin to read it. Read it aloud. Say it to yourself. Read it aloud. Say it to yourself. In the day, say it. In the night, say it. Say it to yourself. You say it. He begins to form a picture in your heart. You say it. He begins to overwhelm your imagination. You face a circumstance that you should be afraid. You will remember what the Lord has said. You will remember that though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. 
for thou art with me. Why? Because of the meditations of your heart. Because of the meditations of your heart. Beloved, this is the time that we need to get into the word of God. Not just get into the word of God. Let the word become the picture in our hearts. Reject every imagination that is not in line with the word of God. Reject every suggestion. Reject every symptom. Begin to declare in the midst of the symptoms, in the midst of the challenges that the Lord has said that he is your healer and he has healed you already 2,000 years ago. Begin to say that in the midst of all this he makes a way. Begin to declare that even the lockdown will not affect your business. You're going out and your coming is blessed of the Lord. Begin to declare the things that God has declared because your meditations is of the Lord. He said day and night. Day and night. Stop waking up and thinking about the challenge. Stop waking up and thinking about that loan. Begin to speak to that loan. Begin to speak to this situation. That our God is the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills. Begin to speak that the hearts of men are in the hands of the Lord. Like rivers of water, he turns it so ever he wills. If God will remember the Ethiopian eunuch, who was probably not even praying, and he saw him reading the, from the book of Isaiah and picked Samuel, uh, Philip from the uh, revival that was taking place in, in Samaria. Many people were getting born again because of one person, because of one person that tuned to the frequency of God. God yanked up Philip, brought him, he ministered, and God took him back. Why? Because day and night, his meditations was in the Lord. In in Romans, I mean, in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, um, verse 3, it says that blessed are they. Oh, turn with me to that scripture, everybody, because I want you to see, because we are still coming back to Joshua, chapter 1. It says, blessed is he who reads. You are blessed when you read. You are blessed when you read. Read the word, read the word, read the word, read the word. Stay, because that is where you get the seeds to sow in the soils of your life. The soils of your life are your circumstances. The soils of your life are your meditations. The soils of your life are the things that affect and impact you. Remember, what happens to you can affect all those that come under your covering. Particularly if you are the head of a home, the head of a business. Listen to me very well now. Because what I'm saying is extremely important. It can make a lot of difference in how your family turns out and how your business turns out. He said, blessed is he that reads. You read. Blessed is you he that hear. You are hearing me now. You keep hearing. Faith comes by hearing and it continuous hearing of the word of the Lord. And blessed is he that keep. What I'm in keeping therefore, I need you to begin to say it. God give utterance to the word of God. When Rachel delivered Joseph, the Bible says that the father gave me and he said, no, look, the name shall be Joseph for God shall give me another son. Listen to me, people of God. Until, just, I'm sure Rachel herself would have decided, nobody calls me anything but Mama Joseph. And if you say Joseph's mom, you're saying, woman, God will give you another son. Dead Death could not take her until God gave her another son. The words of your mouth are extremely important. He said, but thou shalt observe to do. That is in keeping. To do all that is written. For then you will make. It is your responsibility. You know, in this situation, you can determine whether you survive or fail. For then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. Look. Come out of this better than you entered into. I want you to know today in the name of Jesus that the power of God is here to reach you. And I want you to begin at this time to understand the fact that these things are real that I'm sharing with you. And I speak over you today in the name of Jesus that the power of the Spirit of God that is moving now, wherever you are today, let it begin to reach you now and take you to your next level of success. Your next level will walk and pursue with God in the name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus that the circumstances, that men, material finances are falling in place into your life favorably to cause you to move from wherever you are into the pleasant surprises that God wants to take you to. By the power of God today, I command, let there be a release as you speak these words. Let the angels of God back it up and fulfill in your words, in your lives, in the name of Jesus, where you are today. You can also change your life if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. The Bible says with your heart you believe, with your mouth you confess. Now, confess with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus, you died for, you came in the flesh. You died for me. You were raised off of my justification. Therefore, I believe I receive you as my Lord today and you become a child of God. You are born again today. And if you are watching on screen or you are watching 
through the uh, online, I want to encourage you today, call the number of screen. There will be somebody there that will tell you more on what to do. And I want to also encourage you. There's also a giving, uh, uh, some account numbers there. I encourage you to sow towards what you, are listening, what you are hearing today. And you will see God work for you. For the rest of us today, if you are there and you say, I want to give my life to God. There's a minister in the point where you are watching. Go meet the minister. They will tell you the next thing to do. I pray the grace of God to be accomplished upon you, your life. I ask that the words you begin to speak will bless you. Today in the name of Jesus, I bless you with the blessings of God. I release the acceptable and God pleasing thanks from you unto God today. The altar that you raise to God, the altar of sacrifice, the altar of praise. Let it be like Abel's altar. Let it be like Abraham's altar. Let it be like the altar of Israel. Let it be like the sacrifice that was presented, acceptable unto God. Today I say be blessed and let the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart be acceptable unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you and be an overcomer that you are. Remember, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you and give you great peace in Jesus' name.